speak about very briefly in a bunch of my videos, but I've never made like a specific dedicated video on this topic. So that's what we're talking about today. How to live below your means. What does that even mean? Right? Because one thing about people is money is very personal to them. It's personal to everybody. Every single one of us, money is personal. We have emotional attachments to either spending habits or just money in general. And we feel like no one can tell us what to do with our money. So how dare you tell me to live below my means? How dare you tell me what to do with my money that I worked so hard for? This is my money. I will spend it how I please. But the problem with that thought process is, and I've felt it before, so this is how I know, is when you think about that and you're like, well, I spend my money. I answer to nobody. This is me. I like I, I make all this money. I'm going to do whatever I want with it. But you're going to feel the effects of the bills because prices definitely go up. Inflation definitely exists. And then here we go creating another version of inflation on top of the inflation that already exists. So gas prices already going up. Boom. Groceries already going up. Boom. The price of everything is just skyrocketing. And then what do we do? We keep adding additions to our lives and additions to our bills, expecting things to get better. And that's just not how it works. So what is living below your means? I will paint you this picture by telling you this very brief story. So back when I started my internship, I was 20 years old and I lived in Greenville, North Carolina at the time because that's where I went to school. ECU, shout out Pirates. But anyway, I needed to go to Fayetteville, North Carolina, which was about an hour and 45 minutes away from where I lived. And I wasn't about to commute every single day for no hour and 45 freaking minutes. They done lost their minds with that one. So they provided housing. And a lot of the other people who interned with me were from other cities or even states as well. Like some were from Ohio and a lot of them were also from North Carolina, but they were just from different cities. So we had me who was like an hour and 45 minutes away. Then we had people from Raleigh who were like three hours away. Like it was, we had housing, you know what I mean? And some people were smarter and commuted and some people were just like, screw it. Like me, I was like, screw it. I'm not commuting. I'm getting housing. The only catch was we had to pay for it with our intern money. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword. So I decided I was going to go all out. I was going to be comfortable. Wasn't nobody going to tell me nothing, you know. I got a fully furnished single-bedroom apartment. It had the TV included. It had all the appliances included, washer, dryer, everything. And I was living good. I was comfortable. I felt like I was really doing something. I was making like $20 an hour at the time. So you really couldn't tell me nothing. Plus, I was making overtime every other week. And that was like a true time and a half to my salary. So like, I, you really couldn't tell me anything at that time. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll make the money. I, I'll spend it. I'm good. But then there was this one kid who was like, I'm going to get housing, but I'm going to literally chop the price in half by not getting it furnished. I'm going to bring an air mattress from home and I don't need no TV. I got my phone. And that was what he did. Like that, that was all he had for his whole apartment. He even told us, he was like, yeah, like I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm saving my money. I'm going to put this money to good use. And stuff like that is kind of why we have wealth gaps between people because some people are more willing to suffer now or I won't even say suffer to sacrifice a little bit of comfort right now to then be able to buy a world of comfort in the future. I don't think that air mattress was comfortable, but he literally was like, look, like I grew up like this. I'm used to this. I can do this. Now I'm making money. Now I'm making something with myself. I mean, this was just an internship, so this wasn't like a full-time gig. He's like, look, I'm from a completely different state, so I have to get housing, but I'm going to cut the price as much as I possibly can. And he did. So I was paying, I think I was paying like 1100 at the time, because this was a single bedroom apartment, but it was fully furnished. But the regular rate was like $700. So we shaved off quite a bit off of what I was paying. That's an example of living below your means. The people who decided to commute obviously had it better financially. They got to basically pocket almost every single dollar they were making because literally at the time we were all technically living with our parents and that if we were commuting, we were just going to be at our parents' house and then commute to work every single day. But everyone doesn't have that luxury. So when I talk about living below your means, I'm not saying necessarily that you have to go and live with somebody or live with your parents or anything like that. That's not always an option. But what I'm saying is if you're living on your own, for example, you need to control the cost as much as possible and have as little overhead as much as possible.